The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN 906 AM on Friday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and you got markets almost right where we finished off the day yesterday. Quite the acceleration to negative prices yesterday. You're talking about basically 130 S&P points from the beginning of the session. Highs made 4509, those highs made just after 9.30 a.m. yesterday morning when I was on the air, things looked pretty rosy. Uh, Chairman Powell had not spoken yet that the key deciding factor as markets escalate lower you have yield price yields rising prices for notes and bonds selling off where this morning we get the 10-year yield of 2.92 percent we'll jump over to that chart to actually kick things off yesterday you saw the drop early yesterday morning again where markets were you were at 119.11 you traded down more than a full point to bring that 10-year up to 2.92 percent right now we have the 30 year down one tick right now you had a little bit of a sell-off as well when we jump back to the 10 year real quickly we put this thing on a daily boy it's new lows like every single day it seems folks 11808 seems like two point uh, excuse me seems like three percent it's got to be the number that we're heading to we were almost there uh catching a little bit of a lift 11 ticks off of the lows right now but yields coming at you. We'll talk about Chairman Powell, what he had to say. We'll talk about pricing in hikes, man. You talk about the market pricing in some hikes. We jump back to the market in terms of the NASDAQ right now. NASDAQ, let's take a look at it yesterday, man. You talk about a sell-off. You're talking about almost 700 points, 650 points about. You had a high, 14,283. We're currently trading, uh, got to do quick math here. It's 13.7. From 14 to, yeah, five, almost 600 points below where we're at right now. Remarkable action. Dow, so much for 35,000. You give up almost 1,000 points, basically 800 points, 35,413 to 34,592. Some huge moves yesterday, as we all know. Amazon, man, I think you were down 3%, something silly, man. From 3,120, two point something percent for Amazon. You're trading under 3,000 again for Amazon shares. You jump over to Apple shares. You talk about a sell off. You sold off $5.50 in Apple, folks, from the highs to where we closed out the lows. Apple's got 16 billion shares outstanding. Apple lost $100 billion with a B in market cap yesterday. It's hard to comprehend when Apple trades the type of swings it has for market cap, but that is actual money that existed in somebody's account, people's accounts at 171, does not exist there anymore at 166 this morning. We jump over to Microsoft shares. That was quite a sell off from 293 down $13 to 280. We jump over to Tesla. Now, Tesla, they had earnings Wednesday night. You traded up more than $100. Tesla's got a billion shares outstanding, just over that mark. So Tesla's market cap was out about up about $110 billion from where it closed on Wednesday. Quite the pullback with the markets, but Tesla still finished in the positive yesterday. You're going to open basically flat to where we were yesterday. You're up by about $3 right now. From where we closed out the session on Wednesday, you're still positive. But interesting, when you think about Tesla had a remarkable beat on Wednesday. Record profit. They are going to produce more cars than they even were thinking possibly this year. And you're actually below where you started Wednesday's action. You're below where you traded on on Tuesday. Pretty big sell-off yesterday in the market that hit everything across the board. All right, let's jump around to some of the headlines we got this morning. And we'll kick things off with, what are we going to start it off with? Yeah, rate hikes. Let's do it, man. Four back-to-back -back half point fed hikes is the traders latest bet money markets are pricing in 200 basis points of tightening by the fed september decision that implies a half point hike at every meeting of the four of them unheard of since 2000 in may june july and september to take the upper bound of the federal funds rate target range to two point five percent uh he outlined a pretty aggressive approach approach as they're talking about here uh well open to 50 basis points 
James Bullard's talking about 75 basis points. That's not the conversation just yet, folks. But, man, they're going to come with 50, is my imagine. And they're going to come with it at least twice right now is probably what I'm thinking that they'd imagine. Uh, similar article here. Fed rate bets turbocharged as traders see four of them coming. And there's where we're talking about, folks. Swaps price additional 200 basis point hikes by September and 250 by the end of the year. Okay? You have the market implied path. In pink, you have the Fed projected path in yellow. It is a ramp up on both accords, okay? Uh, the change in the federal interest rates target implied by overnight index swaps and euro dollar futures. I mean, this is where we are right now, folks, which is remarkable, okay? They come with a one hike, and yeah, they're going to bring it in a big way. You almost can't overstate it. I could spend the whole show right now, which is why I'm kind of pausing, on how quickly they are going to move. And the surprising thing is that Chairman's Powell, Chairman Powell's comments, while definitely hawkish, it's amazing how markets continue to be surprised with how fast this Fed is going to move. Seems like they've made up their mind it's 50 basis points for at least the next two meetings. And as we stretch towards the end of the year, folks, the comps are going to become something that is not as easy to have the CPI rising like it is right now. Gas prices, yes, they are going to be substantial. But if you start to talk about the core number, that's where we actually got a little bit of a pause in the acceleration of the inflation on the last CPI number. That's what you're going to need to drive 450 basis points cuts, to drive the tune of 9 or 10, excuse me, hikes, not cuts, uh, going forward. So we'll see how it plays out. Okay, jumping around to what else I have going on. Uh, China, yeah. The plunge in China's markets intensifies as the yuan hits a one-year low. You know, I was looking at some of these charts yesterday. Now, here's the fundamental take on this. You are playing with fire by getting into these equities. That's a super fundamental take. I'm half kidding. Uh, China needs an economy to flourish. There was a, a rapid reset in the control some of these companies have over their autonomy, over the executives and the power they have, okay? But China needs a flourishing economy for their goals. Uh, you can't have, what is the term, prosperity for all or whatever they've adopted now without some type of economic engine. I'm taking a look at Baba in particular, you are still, with, still within a downtrend channel that has existed since October of 2020. You've bounced around in it. That's in a weekly. I'm going to throw it on a daily to take a look at this just on that acceleration. Pretty well defined, folks. You know, we come down to the bottom portion to talk about 63 bucks. Even if you catch a pop to the top end, though, you're talking about 114th right now, which is about 30 bucks above this equity. That's a good 35% from where we're trading at right now. Uh, there are variables that you can't quantify if you're trading these, and that's what you'd have to open up to. Many times, you know, if you're a long-term investor in Amazon, I think that you can at least attempt to quantify all the variables. Doesn't mean you do it well, but there are variables out there for the Chinese dictator and the controllers of communist China that they control all the cards, and that's a variable you'll always be open to. Um, but I imagine at some point, folks, we're getting to the point that they may be finding a bit because 85 bucks you're now coming down right to the same area that we were at early in march you're at 86 bucks and change right now you made it down to about 88 you made it down to a low of 86.68 back march 11th we'll talk a little bit more about some of these chinese companies and the one we get back right now Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets right now hitting almost near the session lows. You're at 4374. You're down almost 17 points. That's an additional four tenths percent in the red in the S&P. And you take a look at this chart, man. Uh, dicey area to open at when you're talking about basically near the pre-market session lows. Actually made it to a low last night at 845, 11 points lower than where we are right now. 4362. We're trading 4372 now in the S&Ps. But man, we were just trading right now. 815. We were trading at 4391. 20 points just like that. We we're actually in the positive when I was getting ready for the program between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. this morning. Not so much the case anymore. Dow off 150 points right now. 34558. Uh, jumping back to China real quick. China's CSI 300 has erased almost all of its mid-March rally. That's kind of what I was pointing to some of these equities we're in. We got a pop here. You know, we're coming down to an area that you could see it as a trader, folks, as a trader. Very difficult to invest in the long haul on China when you are subject to anything could happen at any point. I mean, think about this, right? We're talking about Alibaba. You take Alibaba back as far as it goes. Think about if you were bright enough to see China's economy flourishing in 2014 and I'll bought Alibaba on that thought and guess what you're in a losing position over an eight-year period Un unimaginable in terms of what has happened in China's economy that you can invest in a company like that and over an eight-year period you could be in a losing position from the periods of 19 2014 to 2022 uh, just one company but that's the danger but man you're coming down to some areas folks uh, that I as a trader have been looking at them. We'll leave it at that. But not so quick as in, yeah. Well, I've said all the disclaimers, but you get that type of volatility as a trader, it can be attractive. Let's jump around to some of the airlines, man. They were on fire yesterday, gave back some of the gains. Delta was up to 46.27. You finished it about 44 and change. This morning, you're flat with the market negative. United really had a pop, man, up to 52.4%, uh, excuse me, 52.46. You're at 51.73. You're going to open almost a dollar higher again. Let's listen to a conversation on Bloomberg today, and I think they were talking about United uh, debt levels through the roof. And one thing you do have to think about on these airlines, okay? And I've been talking about them for a while, and the rotation is here, man, from 30 bucks up to 51 in the span of a month and a half. There's your three-year weekly. 
Taking a look at some of the Fibonacci retracements this thing has had. Let's take that off for some clarity here for United. United is pushing the highs that we had back in November of 2021. That high, $54.52. Actually made it up uh, when we all got a little euphoric coming into when the vaccines got released, that this thing was going to end sooner than it has. You got up to 50, excuse me, 6370 Got up to 6370 on United. They have quite a debt load. And something to think about is that what happens when they start clearing maybe some of that debt and they start getting the, the option to deliver dividends or buybacks or disseminate their cash to investors? Folks, <clears throat> these airlines need to be regulated. Okay, it's that simple because you need to regulate an industry that, is, that you cannot let fail. If you cannot let market forces dictate whether businesses flourish or fail, then there's the inherent, inherent interest to not act in good faith. And that's what the airlines continually do, okay? They keep no cash on hand to handle market disruptions for whatever reason, right? There's been terrorism. There's been now a pandemic. But if they come every 5, 10, 15, or 20 years even, and they have the ability to wipe out these companies, then those companies, if they want to exist, should prepare for those events. You could buy insurance. That's why, you know, you buy insurance, folks, on your house because, unfortunately, every X amount of years, houses get destroyed by whatever it may be. Most of the time it's weather, right? Uh, in Florida, we have hurricanes. In the Northeast, you can have any type of nor'easter, let alone flooding, et cetera. There's, a, there's, unfortunately, with climate change going on, that risk is going up even more. That's why we buy insurance. Because we just can't exist where we spend $300,000 on a house and get it wiped out completely and we become responsible for that. Well, what the airlines do is they take in all the money, they hold none of it on hand, and then when something bad goes down, like, for instance, a pandemic that dries up all the travel, like, for instance, a terrorism act uh, on 9-11 that, again, dried up all the travel, when those instances exist... They have no money on hand and they come to the public and say, you need to bail us out because you need us. Well, if that's the case, then we need to be able to regulate those airlines so that when this happens again, we don't need to bail them out at a time when they've been giving shareholders more money than they should have been if they need to be around in perpetuity forever, which they do. That's why we regulate the electric companies to some degree. Okay, we need electric. We don't want 20 different companies all building power lines all over the town. So we have a monopolistic tendency on it. We need them to exist. Therefore, they need to be regulated. Uh, airlines, I would argue very similar, folks. If it doesn't happen now, and this one really got my brain thinking because I hope this conversation takes place. It should take place. I hope the politicians have the courage for it to take place because they need to be regulated and they shouldn't be able to just disseminate profits and then Ask for handouts when things go bad. You don't get to take all the money for your ownership when things go good and then ask the taxpayers for money when it goes bad. And that's what all the airlines do. And as sad of a reality as it is, there will be some type of disruption sometime again in the future, folks. OK, and hopefully it's not for um, too harsh of reasons, whether it's terrorism. Uh, just natural disaster, just uh, storms. I mean, you could have a huge storm ripping up and down the Northeast that could potentially cause travel delays in the Northeast. There's a million things that could cause problems for the airlines. They should plan for them. They don't. Uh, and hopefully that conversation takes place because we are going to be in a period of ramped up, accelerated travel. Eventually, they will get over the debt that they've sustained during this pandemic, okay? They will start handing out cash again to their shareholders. And unfortunately, again, at some point in the future, they will face a problem uh, if air travel dries up for some period of time. I mean, imagine if you ran a small business, <clears throat> and many do because they don't have the luxury, okay? But if you ran a small business and you were making the type of money that they've been making over the last 10 years, okay? And just buying things without keeping some money in the business for a time that may go bad. You go out of business. You go bankrupt. That's what happens. We'll see if it happens. Uh, anything changes. All right. Let's jump around to what else we got going on. Let's see what we got. How about American Express? Speaking of people spending money. Yeah. Amex says soaring expenses pay off with jump in new cardholders. Uh, expenses climbed 34%. 
it's quite a climb, more than the market was looking for. But a record number of U.S. consumers take platinum and gold cards for Amex. Uh, you got a 34% jump in expenses for the first three months of the year to $9.1 billion. The market was looking for $8.85. In addition to new customers, extra spending on perks and rewards also help persuade customers to spend more on their cards. I mean, the American credit card industry, folks, it is alive and well. Uh, we'll jump over to American Express. You're sitting right near kind of all-time highs of 199. There's your 15 minutes on the volatility, and you're actually going to be a little bit down maybe on those expenses to 183.87 right now for American Express. Uh company released fewer of the reserves it originally set aside during the early days of the pandemic during it than it did during the same period a year old earlier so it's keeping some of those reserves on hand hey they don't you know we have a lot of uncertainty in this market going forward folks uh very prudent sometimes of a company to be keeping some of those reserves on hand we'll be right back folks we'll finish this up we'll talk a little bit about amex and we'll be back for the opening bell stay tuned The gold market has taken off topside in a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. S&P is opening down right where we were pre-market. You're down 18 points. American Express down about two tenths percent on their numbers last night. We jump over to Netflix. Maybe the max pain is over. Uh, I have kid on that one. Up 1.3 percent. You're up three dollars on the session. You're trading at 221. 
you know, I was reading about Ackman exiting his bet, and one of the things he said was they were wrong, number one. They said that they've learned that when they're wrong, not to hold on to those losses. That's something we all struggle with, okay, as traders. Hopefully you don't let it to go to uh, half a billion dollars before you have to make that. But he's playing with some serious money out there. Uh, but what he also said was is that basically they're getting into an entire different business model. If they're going to start going to advertising as a business model, as opposed to just a straight up, here's what we spend Here's what our subscribers pay. That's how many we have. You do the math on our growth. It's a pretty simple equation compared to most businesses, right? Considering what you have to, as an analyst, I'm sure, configure in your brain and on paper in terms of what happens. Uh, that equation completely changes when they are going to basically completely change their business model, okay? They're saying, guess what? Our original business model of just being subscriber-based does not work anymore. We have to change that to grow. We're now going to sell advertising. Well, folks, what's going to happen? Uh, or how many people are going to take the cheaper plan that has advertising? How many people have become used to Netflix having no ads? That's one of the best parts about Netflix, man. No ads, period. Okay? It's very difficult to forecast how that goes in the future. That's one thing says that he said, and that is one thing I would say about Netflix, man. Yes, there's an opportunity there. You're talking about a company now pushing under $100 billion, $97 billion. You were well above $300 billion at the high. Uh, it's going to be a difficult one to estimate, okay, what is going on in the future as their business model completely changes. So keep that one in mind, folks. All right, jumping back to Disney, because Disney is lower yet again, man. You're down 1.2%. You're down at 120. Disney uh, paying for Netflix's sins on Tuesday, trading lower with, with the market yesterday. You're lower today, down more than the market, down to percent. You take a look at Disney, man. You're now well below this 618. That was an area that was a former area you chopped around in the middle of the pandemic from June through November. Uh, Disney really accelerated when the vaccine efficacy came out um, in November. The election was over. Markets accelerated from 125 to 203, and it's kind of been a one-way shot down to 120.33. Now, I'm going to give a little bit of information about what's going on in terms of losing the ability to have their Reedy Creek district. Now, the first thing that's a bummer, right, is that you have election uh, state representatives, Republicans, saying that this bill is not retaliatory. Folks, it is important to keep our elected officials accountable. If you think it's not retaliatory just for something the CEO said, then that's unfortunate, okay? Because it's nothing but retaliatory right now. And the effects of something like this on the actual Voters and residents of the state is going to be so harsh out of spite that you almost can't overstate it. And yes, it's unfortunate that this is going to be political, okay? But what do you do, folks? This is where I live. You're going to have citizens that are hurt tremendously. You're having the stock hurt. You're having employees hurt, okay? Uh, there's been some discussion over the fact that Number one, Disney has municipal debt. I should say Reedy Creek District has municipal debt. That debt has to be dealt with somehow, okay? But uh, this is one thread on Twitter talking about what else goes on. So Reedy Creek, some great points here, all right? Nick Papan, Papantis, Papan. Papantonis, Papantonis, maybe. Not familiar with this. Uh, WFTV uh, reporting in Orlando. Okay, so he has a special interest here uh, in terms of reporting on the area that is impacted, folks. And check out the impact, all right? Talk about voting out of spite, not worrying about screwing over your own residents. Uh, Reedy Creek's a special tax district of Disney. It's essentially its own city. Disney pays taxes to Reedy Creek. Okay, so then they operate all the services. They operate the fire department, the planning department, the sewer department, the public works department. Okay, Disney pays, uh, and we get into it more, I think it's 160 something million to that district on top of what they already pay. Okay, uh, on the other hand, Disney controls Reedy Creek. So if they ever want to build a new hotel, okay, or a highway within that district, they ask themselves for permissions. Uh, they already follow all the laws and building codes. So this isn't some deal where they get to create their own laws and codes, okay? They still get everything they want. It's going to slow the process down is what it's going to do first off, okay? We all know uh, if you've ever had to do anything like that, you file it with 
I guess this would be the county, okay? But they even talk about potholes, okay? Disney is an epic level of beauty, folks, okay? This is going to hurt Disney. It's going to hurt the tourism experience there. It's going to hurt jobs there. It's going to hurt the company there, okay? There is no way that the regular city workers are going to take care of Disney the way that Disney does, okay? Now, the bigger issue for everyone else, though, is the tax re revenue. Disney already pays the same local property taxes as every other landowner. Okay, Reedy Creek added its own taxes on top of that, 163 million per year. They are not going to be paying that anymore if that district is done. The taxes go away, and Orange and Osceola County, okay, uh, can't do anything to get that back because Disney already pays their property taxes. However, the counties will now be responsible for all the services that are covered that Disney has to pay 163 million dollars to cover. OK, so what's what's the plan here? Either the services suffer. You're right. Either either the county says we can't handle what Disney needs. So you're not going to be able to do anything you want to do anymore because we can't handle one hundred and sixty three million dollars worth of the revenue that we lost to provide the services for that county that you need. Or they ramp up the county and add all of that extra money and provide those services to Disney. Uh, the counties will be now be responsible for all the services Reedy Creek provides and all of the debt it has accumulated, not even talking about the debt, right? So if they can't raise sales taxes or impact fees, they can't. So the counties will have to raise property taxes. They must tax every property equally, okay, not just Disney, and therefore it's expected the property taxes in Orange County could rise as much as 25% next June. Osceola, much smaller and less wealthy, still working on its figures, but it's going to hit them as well. Many of the county's residents work for Disney and have jobs derived from Walt Disney World. They'll be paying their employers taxes now. It's out of spite. It's out of nonsense, folks. They get down into the numbers even more. Um, if you want to look up this gentleman on Twitter, feel free. It's a great thread that talks about some of the numbers here. And it's a real shame that you have politicians saying it's not out of spite. And I went over it on my program yesterday, folks, okay? The bill, I think it's 1557 in Florida. Um, it's not a good bill in that it really prevents people who are either gay or transgender being able to just even talk about that in any form in high school. All right, look at the bill. And it's a real bummer when you got politicians gonna hurt the people they wanna represent so much just out of spite. Um, DeSantis is gonna be running for office for a while. And it's a real unfortunate deal what's going on in Florida right now, because there's a lot of people that are gonna be hurt. Uh, and this is what is occurring. I don't think a lot of people really know the impact uh, that the spiteful Republicans in Florida right now are causing on their own citizens. So hopefully this helps shed some light on that. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. And we don't got market stopping, folks. Welcome back. We got the S&Ps. Look at that drop off, man. Uh, on a five minute basis, 935, you're trading at 4375. And just like that, 20 points gone further. We're negative 32 points in the S&P right now. NASDAQ 100, negative 64. The Dow really dropping. Check out that drop in the Dow. Over 1,000 points, folks. Uh, in about 24 hours from where we're trading at yesterday, 35,413. 34,000. 406 right now in the Dow. Crude off about a dollar twenty at 102.62. Goldtron contract right now catching a bid. Uh, they're talking about gold in the Tiger's Den over there as well right now. All right, jumping back to unfortunately a little bit of politics, folks, but it's important to be informed and it's a real bummer the stronghold that Trump has on the Republican Party right now. And you know, the New York Times catches a lot of heat from him, but lies are just common business right now. You got the leader of House Republicans, Kevin McCarthy. There was a New York Times story talking about that he had said that he was gonna ask President Trump to resign after January 6th. He comes out and denies it outright, and then of course the tape exists. The ridiculous part about this, folks, okay, is that Liz Cheney got ousted from the party for things she was saying, and McCarthy is on tape agreeing with her before he ousted her and bent the knee to Trump. Uh, it's a real unfortunate thing what is happening, folks. I got a lot of Republican ideology in myself, but as long as this is what is going on with the party, and this is what is going on with the party in Florida, it is very unfortunate, folks, okay? What happened on January 6th, we're all gonna relive it. We're gonna relive it in November. We're gonna relive it in 2024 as well. And it's important to remember what happened. It's important to remember that there is Kevin McCarthy on audio tape saying that he is gonna ask the president to resign, okay? Over and over and over, history is trying to get rewritten here. Um, hopefully these audio tapes have to shine some light on the real feelings of the Republicans in office before they bent the knee. Um, to, to former President Trump. It's a tough deal, man. Um, but lies are abound. And I know that both parties lie, lie, folks, but you're talking about the facts that we know, okay, are that the president led a rally on January 6th, then his supporters stormed the Capitol, okay, to try and prevent the vice president from counting all of the votes to confirm that Biden had won the election. You have the House leader at the time saying that he was gonna ask the president to step down. He actually thought that he would get impeached at the time. We all kind of did. He had some pretty strong words for President Trump at that time saying he was responsible, okay, for January 6th and for his supporters, all right? But guess what? They're trying to whitewash everything. The tapes are out there. He was gonna tell the president to resign according to the tapes, uh, and we're gonna relive it over and over and over, all right? 
Yeah, we're going to get the, the, the what about ism, Duncan Steve. What about ism? What about ism doesn't play right now, okay? We can talk about everything, folks. There's nothing what about ism about this. I don't want to hear what about ism something else, okay? I'm talking about one thing, Steve, okay? The what about ism, that, that doesn't fly. That's the fastest way everybody says, what about this? Well, let's discuss everything. I'd be happy to talk about all of that, okay? I'm talking about having a son that's one years old, folks, and. Free and fair elections are something that we are going to need to battle for for the foreseeable future, period, end of sentence. All right. The things going on right now across the, the world. OK, the impact to remind everybody. OK, President Trump was impeached the first time for withholding funds to Ukraine. OK, for his own political purposes. The reason why many people in office, if we want to do it all, okay, if we want to go there, were so up in arms about the first time he got impeached, because to hold congressionally approved aid to a Democratic ally that was facing, okay, potential war from Russia, okay, was something that no president should do merely for political purposes because it puts us at risk, it puts our allies at risk for the president's political purposes. So he was impeached the first time for that. Then he was impeached, okay, for the January 6th insurrection at the Capitol. Okay, so when you say what about the pipeline, Steve, I believe that's insincere to what's going on if you want to have that conversation okay and they're two different conversations and it doesn't make this right okay no matter what you feel about a pipeline okay very unfortunate what is going on speaker of the house outright lying saying he never would have said that he's on tape it's up and down the line floridian republicans now up in arms willing to destroy disney willing to to assess county after county taxes after taxes just out of spite for those politicians it's not how it's supposed to be folks OK, and don't be afraid to speak up to it. Yesterday, when I talked about this, OK, leftist propaganda left and right. People like to shut you down. Don't be afraid to stand up for what's right. OK, because people like to, to yell you down. They say you're against freedom. OK, they say you're against capitalism. OK, I'm all about freedom and capitalism and all of that, folks. OK, and no one's going to be able to make me be quiet. So that's the best part. And they can't do the same thing to you, too. Stand up for what is right, folks, OK? Because we're seeing a lot of what is not right going on. Yeah, it's a whataboutism, OK? Though there's no whataboutism, man, OK? The whataboutisms go up and down the line, left and right, folks, OK? Up and down the line. There's no whataboutism. Doesn't make anything what's going on right, OK? When Trump got in office, we'll do the whole segment. This is going to be a whole segment because it's important, folks, OK? I'm watching Disney get destroyed by Republicans in Florida. I want to be able to bring my son there, okay? So no one's going to tell me to shush, okay? And I know you're not saying that to me, Louie, all right? But no one's going to tell me to be quiet, okay? Because this has real life impacts, folks, of what's going on up and down the line, okay? We're living it and you're going to see it play out and we're seeing it play out right now in what's going on, okay? And, and the dishonest nature of what's going on across the board is very tough to stomach when you think about where elections are going forward, okay? <laughs> the January 6th insurrection at the Capitol, okay? Everybody said when Trump got into office in 2016, and I gave him credit, man, I wanted great things. I wanted change. The party, the country needs a third party, okay? That's probably my take, okay? But everybody said give him a chance, all right? He's not going to be the same guy. Well, how did that end, folks? All right, it ended with an insurrection at the Capitol with President Trump leading a rally in which he said the election was stolen, it was not fair, spoke to his listeners, they stormed the Capitol, all right, and thankfully um, it didn't go as bad as it probably could have, and it went pretty freaking bad, okay? Give him a chance was the line in 2016, all right? He's not the hateful person that he was on the campaign trail, all right? Once he's the president, he's going to lead the country. Give him a chance, Okay, well, that chance, folks, that chance resulted in the leader of the House Republicans, Kevin McCarthy, saying that he was going to ask the president to resign. That's what that chance led with. Okay, so when we talk about that, Steve, okay, when I talk about that giving President Trump a chance led to the House leader saying he was going to ask him to resign. All right, and then we talk about a pipeline in response. I don't think that's a fair reply. OK, and, and you're not the only one, man. It's unfortunate because I love you, man. And I hope you call the program and we can talk about it. But the conversation 
is not effective if that's the conversation, because this is the conversation. You want to have the pipeline conversation? That's the pump conversation. That's that's fine. Uh, but that was the chance, folks, and the chance ended with an insurrection at the Capitol that Kevin McCarthy said that he was going to ask Donald Trump to resign. And now, of course, here we are more than two years later. He denies he said it. He's on trape saying it. We know what happened. OK, uh, this is about democracy, folks. OK, I don't need to spend time with anybody, Frank. OK, I don't need to spend time with anybody, brother. I got my facts dead on. We'll talk about the market when we get back. Stay tuned, folks. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the gold contract catching a bid. We're on a five minute chart here, 4 a.m. Eastern Time. You're trading in 1955. You trade down about $25. We hit 1930, and since then, man, you've popped about 15 bucks. Gold trading at 1945 right now. We jumped down to notes and bonds. A little bit of a lift. Right now, you're talking about jumping back to that yield right now. 10-year, 2.91, 2.906 to be exact. We're trading 118.25 in the 10-year. We jump over to crude, down about a buck 27 right now for crude. Bitcoin, talk about a pullback with the market, man. Really interesting how correlated now Bitcoin is with the e. NASDAQ 100 in particular, I think is the best correlation. Maybe for uh, my show on Monday, it's Friday, gotta love it. Maybe for the show on Monday, uh, I'll do a little correlation because I saw a chart a couple weeks back. Not sure if it's held up, but Bitcoin, if you're trading Bitcoin, you are basically trading the NASDAQ 100 for one period of time. Uh, 
do it yourself. Maybe later in the day, I'm going to check it out. Uh, but yeah, interesting when you think about that has some staying power if you start being market correlated. Uh, that is a big proponent uh, for Bitcoin. Check out Ethereum as well, man. 3183, you're under 3,000, 2994. And let's jump to some of those FANG stocks as we round it out. Amazon catching a bit. Looks like uh, maybe a little bit oversold yesterday. It was quite a pullback, man, yesterday. Amazon still under 3,000, though. We jump over to Tesla, catching a bit on the open. Don't hold down Tesla, man. You're up 1.1% for Tesla shares. You jump over to the big dog Apple. Apple up. Look at this. So we get the FANG stocks up right now. You get the NASDAQ 100 barely in the red. The Dow is really taking a beating right now. How are the banks doing? JP Morgan is lower right now. Bank of America down by about 1.2%. We got a little bit of a lift going on. Uh, City down about 8 tenths percent right now. And how the airlines doing? Delta's flat. United. Whoops. United flat as well. Oh, no. United. United is strong, man. Uh, they were the biggest one up yesterday. You're up 4% today. How about Boeing? Talk about a pullback. I've been talking about this trend for a while on Boeing. We're at 181. You touch 170, I'd be looking at Boeing in a heartbeat, man. 167 is the low. Maybe you wait till there, but 170 puts you right on that trend line on Boeing. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for listening to me. Uh, all I'm trying to do is make you think, folks, all right? Can't change everybody's opinions with that last segment, but make sure you're thinking about things, all right? Think for yourself. Solve those problems in your head. They're important problems, uh, and don't get caught up in uh, the haze of the truth. Thanks so much, folks. Have a great Friday. Stay tuned. We got a man, Basil Chapman. He's live right now, please.